Hey everybody, welcome back to the Topsoil Podcast and our mini series, The CI Effect. This is episode four. I hope you're learning a lot and find a lot of value out of this mini series. I know we really enjoyed putting it together for you. In this episode, Chad and I sit down to discuss the 45Z tax credits. This is really what is enabling these markets to explode. We still have a lot of dust that needs to settle with the rules, a lot that's got to get sorted out, but we know enough to get the ball rolling and be ahead of this thing. We're sitting in a good spot. We hope that after you listen to this episode that you're going to be ready to really rock and roll here as well. This episode is the deep dive into Section 45Z and the significance to my farm. Or hey, Chad Siebold here, Continuum Mag, CEO of Continuum Mag with Mitch Hora. Thanks for joining today. Hey, listen, we've been talking quite a bit about 45Z carbon intensity, and this is a, you know, our series, a five-part mini-series, I guess, if you will, around everything carbon intensity. We dumped a lot of information on these folks, but we're going to get deeper into where the money comes from on some of the CI scoring and how do we monetize 45Z, right? 45Z. Let's talk a little bit about that. Who created that? Where's that at? Where did that come from? 45Z is a federal tax credit for low carbon transportation fuels, low carbon renewable biofuels, transportation fuels. So it entails any of these transportation fuels, which would include ethanol, biodiesel, renewable diesel, sustainable aviation fuel. And it gives producers of those fuels a tax credit for lowering their carbon intensity score, namely below 50. So most of these ethanol plants today, we've been talking in our previous um, episodes, gasoline typically has has a CI score of 100. Ethanol typically has a CI score around 55. To be in the money with the tax credit, you got to be below 50. So they have a little bit of work to do before they even qualify. That's why we got to get it rolling now. I I love it. So we talked a little bit about it, right? So 45Z really is driving low CI grains, right? Because low CI grain goes into low CI ethanol or low CI fuel. Here's, here's one weird little thing that I threw out um, to, to one of the producers I was talking to. We were talking about the number of cents per bushel, right? So if you take the 45Z and you take the 5 and 4 interlace it, right? It's the 5.4 cents, right? So maybe talk about the 5.4 cents um, per bushel credit. Yeah. Ethanol company. So we're going to use ethanol here, okay? Sure. Instead of the biodiesel and stuff like that, the math is a little bit different. So for ethanol... They have to get their score below 50. As they go from 50 to zero, they're in two pennies per point reduce, reduced per gallon. Okay. Corn, one bushel of corn produces on conservatively 2.7 gallons of ethanol. So if you take the two pennies per gallon times 2.7, gives you a conversion factor to per bushel, which is the 5.4 cents per CI point reduced per bushel. That's essentially our ability to contribute to these tax credits. But the 45Z tax credit is now propped up and we're talking about it because of the amendment that happened in the Inflation Reduction Act, Mm -hmm. which was August of 2022. And it says that no later than Jan 1, 2025, ethanol companies can now start, or biofuel companies can now start earning these tax credits by lowering their overall carbon footprint, Mm -hmm. which includes their scope one carbon footprint, the footprint at the ethanol plant, lowering their scope two carbon footprint, the energy used, and lowering their scope three carbon footprint, which is the supply chain, namely the corn. Right on. Yeah. And we talked about that a couple, I think in episode two, but I think when you, we, we, we always talk about biofuel, um, soy diesel as well, right? So we talk about corn and ethanol a lot, but soy diesel. Same type of deal. The big, the main issue on the soybean side is one bushel of soybeans on average only creates a gallon and a half of biodiesel. So there you take the two pennies times one and a half. Now we're talking three pennies per CI point reduced per per bushel. So it's still good. It's a big freaking deal here. We everything we're talking about, everything we're talking about here directly applies to soybeans as well. You need to be getting your CI score for your soybeans and going through CI certification on your soybeans, just like on your corn. If it's going to a crush facility and that oil going to a, ref, a uh, refinery, yeah. big, big deal. Huge. It's just that the math isn't quite as exciting, but also like something's better than nothing. Though. Something's better than nothing. And you're still, the return on investment is still significant. Yeah. Like you're still making money, uh, whether it's on the soybean side or the corn side. Well, we talked uh, a little bit of how it was calculated. We talked about what it went into effect. 
really maybe the last thing to bring it home for me is that why is it important to the biofuel business, right? And the producer, how that collaboration we talk about, why is it important that we have that handshake? The biofuel producer isn't going to be able to maximize these tax credits without the farmer data. The farmers aren't going to be able to monetize their data without the biofuel producer who's going and getting the credits. We got to work together. What I love about this is we're playing with tax credit dollars. It's not coming directly out of their pocket. Like a lot of these carbon offsets and stuff, everyone talks about when to decarbonize, but when it comes to putting the dollars behind it, sure. they're not really doing it that much. With this, we're talking tax credit dollars. The more that we can lower the carbon intensity score, the more we grow the pie, and the slices of the pie can be a lot bigger. So the opportunity here is to collaborate mm -hmm. Ethanol companies and farmers coming together saying, hey, let's go and optimize this opportunity together. Like we talked in the previous episode, Vilsack is saying, hey, you got a heck of a gift here. Never been a better time. Never been a better time. And if we don't jump on this now, we might not like what happens in the future, right. which we, I don't want to go down that route. These tax credits too, starts Jan 1, 2025. It's currently due to end at the end of 2027. We got a short window here. And if we want those tax credits to be renewed and extended, or if we want other markets to pick up on this, we're gonna have to make some significant impact here. The good thing is farmers can say, hey, we're more than 50% of your carbon footprint today, but we got these guys at Continuum Ag who can get us our scores. We know how to significantly lower that score. Like I mentioned on my farm, yeah. I'm negative 4.1. We can go to not just lower our score, we can go negative. Like that's an amazing so, opportunity here. We just gotta tell this story and collaborate together. So whether I'm a big producer, I'm a small producer, I'm somebody just super techie, or I'm somebody not very techie, does it identify better with one than another or is it for everyone? For everybody. Cool. You're gonna be asked about this no matter what. Okay, so here's the deal. You either start getting ahead of this now and start learning your score and digging in on this. This isn't a huge capital investment. Like this, we're not talking a big dollar amount here. We're talking about investing in your data, investing in your future, being on the cutting edge. We are asking, you know, we're asking for some money here. Yeah. And uh, in order to be up on this, it's going to cost some money, but they're going to be asking for this data, whether you want it or not. Sure, sure. And you're either going to end up settling. The value in knowing. The value in knowing at least puts you in a position of power, in a position of intelligence, yep. in a position of strength. I think you said it well. You're, you're a maker, not a taker, right? You get to be more taker. of a price maker than a price taker. And what I mean by that is you're not just going to be having to settle and just take a small percentage or kind of an unknown percentage, just right. take a couple pennies. At least in this, we can be more in a position to negotiate together. And what I like about that, this cannot be a us versus them. This is right. farmers and biofuels. We got to come together here. Let's be price makers together. That's right. Let's let's go and let's go after this together. Hey, as a producer, the more you incentivize me to help you, the more I'm going to go. Yeah. Well, I love where you're at right right now as a company too, because not only have you showed the transparency, right? You've also basically harnessed the process to be able to say, hey, we are the platform. And we have a certification process, one-stop shop. And we'll talk about that maybe in the next episode. But as, uh, as we're looking to get things started, right, we don't have to, we don't have to dive 100% in right now. Step one is going to topsoil.ag, your CI score, getting things started. Is that right? Well, it takes like 10 minutes. 10 minutes. I mean, geez. I mean, topsoil.ag, if you set up a profile, uh, you set up your password, it asks you what crops do you grow, and you just fill out the default practices and use more of like your kind of conservative practices and stuff. Like, sure. um, you know, where you're, uh, um, where you maybe have some additional room for improvement or where you think like your worst carbon footprint is going to be. Start on that one. Yeah. Okay. Do the, do the one that you anticipate is going to be your highest carbon footprint. Put in those practices. We show you what your score is. We show you what the value is. And you also have our tool in there where you can play with practices and recalculate your score and see what the low hanging Love fruit it, yeah. is. It's so slick. Like just being able to see what is my number today. Mm -hmm. I can start having a conversation with my grain buyer. I can see the opportunity to start reducing my score. Um, you're going to have to document and verify. You're going to have to back this up. Yeah. You can't just say, oh, sure, I got a score of, you know, negative 85. Well, sure. Yeah. <laughs> prove it there, you know, so. The, 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 the producers won't take advantage of that, right? Like for us, for us, we, 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 um, we look at things 
in a different light, right? I think if, yeah. if, um, if, if you look at what it takes to lower a sea ice core, and I, this is kind of what I've been leading into, mm -hmm. Mitch, so you're going to love this. So I got a little something here for you. Speaking of low scores, right? Yeah. Like uh, for like the ones that maybe can't see here, we know the my Hawkeye mug here with the A and F. Like the lower the score, the better, right? Yeah. So maybe we'll we'll transition that in there. I won't let you talk about your cyclones. That too much, Hawkeye but. offense, the lower the score, the better. <laughs> if only Brian Ferentz, you know, thought that that was the the real case, he must think that that is the case. Actually, no comment. <laughs> we, we, we have a great record this year. Rose Bowl's coming. Um, all right, I'm Chad Siebel, Mitch Hora. We're gonna get you into the next session here. Thanks for joining us today.